that following show starring Mr. B comes to you in living color on N. Bergen, who in the world is this? This is Mortimer Snurge's cousin, Milton Snurge. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yup, yup, that is I. <laughs> he came down to watch the show tonight, didn't you? Yup, yup, I'm the show watcher. <laughs> you like to watch Mr. Bergen and Mortimer and Charlie? Yup, yup, I sure do, my guy. <laughs> Do you like to hear me sing? Oh, yeah, yeah, I sure do, yeah. Oh, and do you like to hear Mr. Burrell's jokes? Heck no. <laughs> now, live, it's Snow and Burrell, our April Fool, who's pretty silly the other 11 months, too. Starring in the Craft Music Hall, the guests, Miss Reggie Bergen and Miss Peggy King, plus Joe Besser and the sound of Billy May. Is pretty perky Peggy King. <laughs> Peggy, uh, before we say anything else, I would like to congratulate you publicly on your dramatic debut on television. Oh, you mean last week on Maverick? No, on this show, tonight. Well, that's the nicest way I've ever heard a comedian tell his guest that she wasn't going to have any jokes. <laughs> well, you, you don't need jokes because you're beautiful and you're talented. Peggy, what, what are you going to sing? Nothing. Nothing? Well, first I've got to get it cleared. Uh, I mean... <laughs> what? I mean, I'm not going to sing anything until after we hear from the sponsor. Uh-oh, this girl is clever. This girl's going to wind up with a show of her own. <laughs> this one. <laughs> All right, sponsor, talk fast, because we're waiting to hear Miss King sing. King sing? Is that near Sing Sing? <laughs> <laughs> No, but Peggy is close to our sponsor's heart, Milton. Never, ever the same. 
We're going to also sing. One, swell, Peggy. Dynamite, attractive. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Oh, magnifico, says you both. Well, if it isn't Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. <laughs> They love us, Bergen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they love us, and I can see you like Peggy King, huh, Charlie? Oh, cool, Daddy. Trade the most. <laughs> well, I don't blame you, because Peggy, Peggy, Peggy. Uh, Peggy's not... <laughs> that guy hit me so hot. <laughs> Peggy's not only pretty, but she can really sing. Oh, oh you're right. Oh, she has a wonderful set of pipes. Yeah, she has a wonderful set of pipes. And the rest of the plumbing ain't so bad either. <laughs> Steady, boy. Steady, steady. You'll steam your termites. Yeah. <laughs> steam your termites. You like it? Very clever. Thank Very you. clever, Bergen. Where did you get this new dummy? <laughs> Where did he get me? He picked me up on a used people lot. <laughs> Thank you. Would you do me a favor? Would you explain to Charlie who I am? Yeah. Would yeah. you do that? That should be a challenge. No. I should... <laughs> you should recognize this gentleman. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Why, he's one of the most important men in television. Right. Oh, yes. He has entertained millions of people. With what? With what? <laughs> he is the funniest comedian in America. Yeah. This can't be Milton Berle. That's right, Milton Berle. It can't be. Yes, it is. Milton Berle doesn't fit that description. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now I know what kind of wood your head is made out of. Nutty pine. <laughs> yeah, look at that, huh? Uh, <laughs> You're right, Bergen. A dunny couldn't be that square. Oh. <laughs> Charlie, if you don't apologize to Mr. Burke, he won't introduce you to Miss King. Oh, Charlie, well. wait a minute. Did, did, did you want to meet Peggy King? Is that you want to meet Peggy yeah. King? You know, I'd do anything for a date with that girl. I'd even apologize to you. I accept. <laughs> but, but don't you think that you're a little too young for Peggy King? Well, uh, yeah. Well, he's, he's at that awkward age, Milton. Awkward age? Yes, I'm too old for marbles and too young for Lolita. <laughs> well, uh, 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 Charlie, if you take Peggy King out, that'll leave me without a date. Oh, well, we can fix you up. Can't we, Bergen? We can? Yeah. You know that lady friend of yours? She's just right for Milton Berle. Yeah. Oh, you mean her? <laughs> yeah. Well, she is definitely Milton's type. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I always wanted to meet my type. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll tell you what. You, you go after her, and I'll talk to Peggy King in, in, uh, in dating Charlie tonight, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Crazy man. Yep. I dig that scene. Yeah. Let's split, Berg. We must be spring. I, I feel my sack is bubbling. Oh. <laughs> And I'll have the lady with me. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's going to get a tape for me. I know, Bergen. Beautiful girls. How do I look? Is my hair going? Is my girdle on right? <laughs> Everybody loves a lover. For every man, there's a woman. Oh, he's so right. <laughs> for every woman, there's a man. <laughs> No, wait a minute, Bergen. Is this the date you got for me? Yes, yes. yes. Who is this? This is Effie Clinker. How do you do, Miss Clinker? How do you do? <laughs> Hiya, honey. My goodness, you look just like Rock Hudson. I do? Yeah. Well, to me, all men look like Rock Hudson. You <laughs> naughty <laughs> girl. Come on, honey. What? Let's snake. It's later than you think. Oh. <laughs> Uh, please remember you're a lady. Sure, you're a lady. You remember I'm a lady and watch your hands. Yeah. <laughs> and Bergen, also watch your lips, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you now, I want to understand you. You know, I want, I want you to get the... You want to understand that you want to meet, you want to meet uh, Peggy King tonight, is that right? Yes. Yeah. You want to meet Peggy King? You know, Mildy Baby, yeah. you and I could make beautiful music together. Really? Yeah. What about Billy May? <laughs> Cuckoo! Yeah. Come on, Milton, how about a date tonight? Well, I already made... I, I have a date with Peggy King. Oh, you have? Well, what's Peggy King got that I haven't got? There's nothing, really, but she's a later model. Yeah. <laughs> she's got men on her mind. She has? Up there, I'm doing great. <laughs> With me, Milton, will yeah. you give me a good phone number? No, but I know a phone booth with 32 college boys in it. <laughs> it was nice meeting you, Effie. Really nice meeting you. Well, thank you, Milton. It was nice me meeting you, too. Yeah. And I want to say, I want to say, um, will you move that card a little cue card a little closer, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Your name is on it. Oh, no, no. 
What's the matter with you? He's only a kid. Yeah. Oh, you kid. Oh. All right. <laughs> Effie, will you please? Nothing. Nothing. That sounds like Peggy King. Would you excuse me a minute? Something happened. Open that curtain, please. Open the curtain. What's the matter? What's happened? What's the matter, Peggy? Nothing. I want to talk to you. What about? What's the trouble, Peggy? Charlie insists that you broke your date with me and that I have to go out with him tonight. Is that what he said? Yes. That little con man, he tried to talk me into breaking our day so he could stick me with Effie Clinker, that clunker. <laughs> that little devil, that's what he is. Well, what I want to know is, do we have a date or don't we? We certainly do, Peggy. I'll straighten this whole thing up. Charlie McCarthy, you ought to be ashamed of yourself tricking me like that. I am ashamed, Mr. Barrow. You should be. I'm so ashamed I may kill myself. You mind if I watch? Don't watch. Join me. <laughs> Why, you talking shoe tree? I'll get some sandpaper and rub you out. What I'll do, I'll whittle them down. I'll whittle them down. Don't tell no, me what wait a minute. No. What's the matter? Just, don't get so excited. I just remembered. What? He, he can't go out with me. Why? He isn't real. That's right. What were you yelling? He's just ridiculous. Charlie McCarthy's only a dummy. Hey, hey McCarthy. I just realized you're only a dummy. Well, that does it. What do you mean? I've taken it up. It's time that people know the truth. The truth about what? About the terrible fraud that Bergen has perpetrated on the public. I'm going to expose the whole thing. What's he talking about? I don't know. The truth. I'm the ventriloquist and Bergen's the dummy. (laughs) Edgar Bergen is the dummy? Yes. All these years I've been doing the voices. Mortimer Snurd. Oh, you don't do Mortimer Snurd. I never heard I of know it. the alphabet, A, B, C. Oops, wrong network. <laughs> you do Link. do that. Yeah, I do Effie Clinker, too. You don't do no. Effie Clinker. Love and marriage, love and marriage. I'm a fussy, I'll take either one. <laughs> you do do Effie Clinker. Is that all the voice you yeah, do? And to prove it to you, I'll even do the biggest dummy of them all. Who? Edgar Bergen. <laughs> If you rush backstage, I'm being attacked by woodpeckers. <laughs> Edgar Bergen, a dummy. And after all these years, I've been playing gin rummy with him and losing. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. Oh, it's kind of hard to believe. It is. Oh, no, I know, but it's true. I created Edgar out of wood. I carved his face. I clothed him. I painted his features. I gave him his character. I made him what he is today. Yeah. A dumb Swede. <laughs> Incredible. I haven't heard anything so unbelievable since Arthur and Catherine Murray said, let's sit this one out. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it either. All, all right, right, all right. See for yourself. Look in that closet. Look, Peggy. No, it couldn't be. I... Well, let's go and look in the closet. Just a minute, Peggy. I can't believe it. Edgar Bergen, a tree. It couldn't be. Although there was that time in the locker room that I noticed carved on his left leg, Sid loves Sophie. And come to think of it, his right leg had moss. On the north side. But I never suspected the whole thing. Well, maybe it's true. Maybe Charlie is the ventriloquist and Ann Bergen's the dummy. Let's look in the closet and see. Let's open the closet. I don't believe it, though. A trunk. That Charlie really had me gone there for a minute. I really mean that. You mean you really believe what Charlie was saying, Mr. Burrell? Well, Mortimer, almost. <laughs> you better change places with me. You're dumber than I am. <laughs> Mortimer, that's no way to talk to Mr. Burrell. No, I let him. Today is his birthday, April Fool. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you, too. <laughs> how, how would you like to hear Milton and Peggy sing a duet? I'd rather hear them sing a song. <laughs> Mortimer, how can you be so stupid? Oh, I just open my mouth and Durgan takes over from there. <laughs> Milton, yeah. you and Peggy better take over from here. All right, Billy May, if you please. What's the matter, Peggy? You're mad? I'm still mad at you about 
about Charlie McCarthy. Oh, don't worry about Charlie McCarthy. That's plot. People don't go out whistling plot. They whistle songs. What were you going to say? The sleepless night, the daily fight, the quick toboggan when you reach the height. I miss the kisses and I miss the bites. I wish I were in love again. The broken dates, the endless waits, the lovely loving and the hateful hates, and the conversation with the flying face. I wish I were in love again. No more pain. No more strain. No, he's saying, but... I would rather be Gaga, yes, sir. The pulled out fur of Cat and Kurt. The fine mismating of him and her. Say, I've learned my lesson and I wish I were in love. Uh, Word is sigh, the blackened eye. The words, I'll love you till the day I die. The self-deception that believes the lie. Yeah. I wish I were in love again. When love congeals, it soon reveals the faint aroma of performing seals, the double crossing of a pair of heels. I wish I were in love again. No oh. more care. I'll take it. No despair. <laughs> we're all there now. But we'd rather be punch drunk. Believe us, sir, we much prefer the classic battle of him and her. We don't like quiet and we wish we were in love again. Come riding along next on this channel. Ken Carpenter speaking.